It's been said that half of success comes from just showing up. But when it comes to content creation, just showing up is no longer enough. The world is now drowning in content from people showing up and hoping their content will magically make their dreams come true. So what do we do as content creators who have life experience or expertise that we want to share with our audience? We have to level up. And today's guest is an expert at helping creators do exactly that. Kevin Shen began in the startup world of Silicon Valley before becoming a YouTube creator. He then pivoted into building a business that helps YouTubers and speakers and thought leaders create their own dream home studio that invites your audience to connect with you and to believe that you know what you're talking about before you even say a word. Kevin not only helps his clients demystify all the technical details of picture and sound and design, he also knows the psychology of how it all fits together and why. And that's what we're about to dig into right now. Welcome to the Story Greenlight Podcast, where we're all about empowering creators like you to tell your stories, connect with your audience, and create the impact that you were put on this planet to make. My name is Jeff Barch. I'm a coach, author, and entrepreneur with over 20 years of experience shaping content for ABC, NBC, Universal, Disney, Apple, and a whole bunch of others. My team and I support creators with followings in the hundreds to the many millions. At Story Greenlight, we believe that you matter, your message matters, and the world needs to hear what you have to say. Kevin Shen, how are you, dude? Good, awesome, man. Good to be here. This is exciting. I, I will tell you, it's the, there's a short list of people that we don't interact all that often, but when we do, it's just you, you jump on the Zoom call, and all of a sudden, we're just shooting the breeze, going back and forth. That's, I love that. Yeah, I love, yeah. I, I love having that. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Nerd buddies all the way. Yes, indeed. So for those of uh, for those of the Story Greenlight crew who are not familiar with you and what you do, um, start let's let's start out by say by talking about what are you up to right now? Who do you help? How do you help them? And uh, then, then let's just jump into the very glaring fact that that's not where you started. So Ooh. where are you now? I love it. I love it. Um, yeah, so hello, Story Greenlight folks. Glad to be here. Love you all. Um, so right now where I'm at is I help people set up a video studio, whether it's for filming or for online courses or Zoom calls, so they don't look like a hostage in a basement. That's, I think, the best <laughs> word that I've kind of like the mental picture to communicate that. Um, I love that. And it's hard to unsee it once you kind of, kind of see that. Um, yeah. And because I think with everyone jumping on the internet nowadays, like in order to have that human impact, you have to be able to scale yourself through the digital medium. You have to exist in digital land. And we don't connect as much with text uh, compared to like faces and stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's my, that's my like official bio. But honestly, like I'm just trying to figure things out. Like I am trying to figure out how to help more people um, and more kind of deeply everyday thinking like how do, how do I kind of have an impact in a way that I think has a more human aspect to it, right? The stuff that I really care about is I think a lot of people um, are in a place where they need a little bit more help and a little bit more encouragement and, and a sense of belonging, right? Everyone's kind mm -hmm. of struggling in their own little way. And I think there's so many people that have uh, healing to offer or some kind of a message or something that will make people feel less alone. And I think that's like the coolest, coolest thing possible to do with video beyond like the technical, like nerd gear stuff. Um, and that's what really gets me going. Um, Dude, yeah. I, I love that so much because just as you're talking about figuring out how things are moving forward for you and your on your end and what you're putting out into the world, I mean, that is constantly in process on my end and figuring out the direction of Story Greenlight and, and decades of what I've been building in my life as a teacher and a communicator and uh, you know, and a storyteller and all this kind of stuff and figuring out, man, the, the world really has changed. It's not enough to put out information anymore. You can't just have information. You have to make a human connection. And that's all about the kind of things you, that you're doing. Well said. I like that. 
Well, and, and, and having said that, I mean, you are, you did not start out doing this. So let's hit the rewind button and uh, talk about where you came from. Yeah, I actually told him, I swore to myself I would never be like the gear guy ever and like, and then like never be the studio guy. <laughs> and it's funny how things change because um, my whole life I'd always been like really into like video. I think in high school, started doing some video projects. YouTube was just beginning to be a thing. And I was, I kind of fell in love with that uh, simultaneously while falling in love with the area of like, like I was a peer counselor in high school. And it's so cool when you could, kind of uh, be there for somebody in, in a in a very vulnerable place, right? And help people through these moments that we all have, but we kind of, for some reason, don't acknowledge day to day in public where it's like, hey, how are you doing? I'm doing good. It's like, no, how are you actually doing? And kind of mm. being able to kind of be in that, that space with them. And I realized you could do that through video because it makes you feel a certain way and it can draw out things that and you're also the expert at this, right? Like when it comes to story and just like where you take that person um, through the entire rich medium of not just, you know, the talking to them, right? I think video goes even farther. You introduce music and pacing and all this stuff in it. Mm -hmm. You can actually guide someone on a deeper connection and make them feel richer things than even if you were just there in person. Oh, 100%. And, right. And as like an introvert, that's like super cool. Well, uh, well, actually, since you mentioned that on, on, on a scale of one to 10, how would you just... On a scale of one being, do not talk to me. I will crawl under my rock because that's how much of an introvert I am versus 10, I cannot exist unless I'm surrounded by people at all times. Um, where would you put yourself on that? So personally? a 5.5 in that case would be the the ambivert, right? Yeah, okay. Okay. So I think I'd right. probably be like maybe a four. I'm like introverted, but I really enjoy being around people. I just don't have it in my tank to yeah. be around people that long. And so that's what I love about video because it lets you communicate without being around people. <laughs> right. I love people. Just don't make me be around them. Damn it. Yeah, like, <laughs> and you can get your thoughts in order and you can really kind of craft this thing. And it's like this gift, right? Mm -hmm. You can say like, here it is. Um, and this is just for recorded video. Um, but I think you get to put a lot of your heart into something and then show it to people. But it magnifies that scale, right? Like it multiplies your impact and the number of people you can reach. And like, honestly, it still blows my mind. Like I, I did this uh, video in 2011, I think, like pretty long ago. I look back yeah. on it and it now has 700 something thousand views and I calculated it. And I was like in, I don't know how many years, let's just estimate like 10 years. In mm -hmm. 10 years time, it racked up, I think, the equivalent of seven years worth of continual watch time. If you just multiply out like the number of views by that. And it's like, can you imagine spending seven years just nonstop, not sleeping, not eating, just like in front of somebody, just trying to make them feel better. And like when that person's done, you wow. move to the next person. I think that's just like crazy to, to even just try and like imagine that. Man, oh man. That is, that is so, that, that is so nuts. I mean, and, 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 and the, and the fact of what happens with video, I mean, we've known for a century now, moving pictures are a massive form of leverage. You know, you start out with movie stars, you start out and you move on to TV stars and you move, you move on to social media and all the things. It's just, it's just this incredible kind of leverage that has always been limited to the select few who have access to the big platforms, mm. have, big, have access to the studios and all the equipment and their distribution systems. And it's just been completely flipped on its head. I just, yeah. it, it, That's nuts backtracking a little bit. So this, you know, this is the kind of stuff we're thinking about at this point. And this is the kind of stuff that we're helping people do, but you did not. So you were in high school, you were learning about this stuff. And then where did you go after high school? Yeah. So after high school, I wanted to get into film. My parents were like, are you sure you want to build a career around that? <laughs> around that? I'm glad things have changed. Um, okay. At least like in, in terms of my perception around that. 
But I think um, what I, what I, did you what did you think you wanted to do? Did you, did you want to write, direct, act? I thought I wanted to be a director. Okay. And I'm actually curious what it would um, have looked like if I had gone that route. But I'm actually really grateful that I went this route because I ended up doing the other thing I swore I would never do, which would become an engineer, like a code monkey. Like I'm never going to be like one of those people. <laughs> you know, it's like first year of college. Like, oh wow, this is actually pretty cool. It's like Legos on the computer. Yeah. So I did that. Um, computer science and business major, and then did the startup route, like the tech startup, building apps, building websites and stuff. And I feel like so learning what, all what that. Were you, what were you actually doing? Because I mean, you ended up in Silicon Valley. I mean, you were working at startups. Yeah, yeah. What, what, so what exactly were you doing in that world? Yeah, honestly, I was, um, I was at a, a startup uh, that a friend of mine started in college, and we were building cybersecurity um, stuff. And so okay. like cybersecurity solutions. And I found myself speaking at this conference. Well, cause backtracking, this was when I just like, I want to learn as much as I possibly can, because I knew that like, I don't understand this business thing. And for some reason, I think, or not for some reason, like, obviously we all need money to survive. So I mm -hmm. want to go do meaningful things in order for me to do that. I have to go make money somehow. Let me go learn how to make money. Mm -hmm. And then I found myself uh, kind of sidetracked. Like I, I kind of just kind of lost that. I'm just like, oh yeah, this is just me living my life. And then I got to a point where I was speaking at these cybersecurity conferences going, like someone came up to me and was asking me a question. I go like, why are you so excited to be here in my head? Like we're talking about cybersecurity. This is like really boring stuff. Why are you here? Um, and it just kind of clicked for me that um, I think everyone has to find the stuff that they're really into, mm -hmm. right? And we're lucky if we can do that. And for me, I feel like I was lucky enough, you know, to be in my mid twenties, thinking like, how do I want to spend the rest of my 20s? If I continue going down this route, even if we succeed, am I going to feel like I've succeeded as a person, given that I think growing as a person to me is more valuable than just mm -hmm. hitting one benchmark out of many, right? So I was like, okay, um, hey, mom, dad, I'm going to be a YouTuber. <laughs> just like out of the blue, I'm going to do this full time. I've seen people, <laughs> right? Like people who made a living doing this, and I think mm -hmm. I could do something similar given past experiences. I'm going to do this. And did that. And whole... they said, what, what, have you considered a career in filmmaking? <laughs> so <laughs> it was, yeah, it was like very, um, it was, it was kind of like very confusing. I, I think they were very nice about like, oh yeah, you know, like um, I think this, you know, maybe think about it a little bit more, <laughs> uh, but I'm really, really grateful. They were super supportive of it because I would not have been able to, learn things the hard way. And I think that's often the way that I personally need to learn things mm. because I think I can do whatever I put my mind to until I hit a brick wall and go, oh, okay, now let me try something else. And that's what happened, you know, two years into that YouTube journey. I burned through all my savings, burned through hundred K was living back at my parents' house. I was like, oh shoot, I got to ask my parents for money now. Okay. I got to rethink this thing. Like, oh. What am I doing? Um, and it was more so a lesson of like, I realized as a content creator, you kind of have to also decide what content you're making, right? And I was just kind of thinking about like, I want to give people hugs on the internet. Like that's something I genuinely felt is so important, but I didn't have mm -hmm. any real tangible value proposition to make a business out of that to keep going. So I was just burning through money and I was working the hardest that I've ever probably worked where every single day I was working like 14 hours, wake up, start editing, just super in love with it. But mm -hmm. it was it was a grind, and I realized I wasn't getting anywhere. Um, and, and so that's, you probably yeah. well, and, and I happen to know that you were building some traction with that. And I would be willing to bet that you were getting some really positive feedback from the people subscribing to your channel. This, like, this is amazing. Thank you for doing this. Please keep doing this. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, man. I always forget that. Yeah. Um, it was just at the point where. I wasn't able to sustain that because right. there was no business model connected to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I think what I ended up doing was realizing, okay, I need to go back to what I thought about originally. Like, okay, I want to learn how this skill of business works. Right. Cause I kind of lost that track doing the startup thing. Um, and so I was like, okay, let's go back to that. Let's kind of just build something that takes what I know and can actually help people. And like, let's create content for what other people want um, instead of just the, like the, the 
I hesitate to say the feely side of things because I think that's so valuable. It's just not directly monetizable. So I think there has to be some kind of a, a mix in some way. Dude, I got to tell you, he, you, you have no idea the parallels that we have both gone through with this because I started my career as a professional television editor in Los Angeles. Well, probably when you were still in high school. When did you graduate from high school? I was 2010. Okay. I started my <laughs> career in I started my career in LA when when 10 years before you graduated high school. So, uh, you know, it, it was early 2000s and <clears throat> you know, I was learning about this stuff and about five, six years into my career, learning of how to communicate with, you know, at a high level, high end broadcast television. Uh, I, I, I read a book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. And I, and I decided that I wanted to learn how to make m money in ways beyond just me trading my hours for dollars. And so I started down that rabbit hole of business building. And what happened was every time I got into a mastermind scenario, I mean, and, and I ended up in a in national level masterminds where I was in room with multimillionaire business owners that I had no business being in those rooms. Somehow I got in there and I showed them the stuff that I was working on and I played them some of the pieces and they went, whoa. This is powerful stuff. You need to take this to businesses. You need to help video you, you, businesses do video so they can make people buy more things and make more money, blah, 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 blah. And, I, and it just never really connected for me. And what, I was, what was happening right then was that everyone that I showed that stuff to said, this makes me feel things. This is powerful. There's something there. And it was beyond me on how to turn that into a, a, you know, a monetizable business model. And it's taken a good amount of time for me to figure that out. Yeah. Wow. I, I, I totally feel that there's like this, um, this tension, I think between the meaning and the money. Mm. And I would say if there's a theme that's run throughout my life, like that is a huge one. Um, and I think there is a way to be like completely in your mission and your, your meaning while baking in that money side. Right. And cause that's really just about service. And I think it's really about like thinking about it in a very creative way and being willing to sort of put our ego aside and say, it's not like what I think, you know, meaning is to different people, like making an impact on someone who is going out there and helping people find healing through whether they're like a digital therapist, like a psychotherapist through zoom, mm -hmm. right. Or someone who, you know, is writing a book that a lot of people need to, to know about and they're trying to promote it on YouTube. Right. I think I'm realizing there's so many different ways to contribute in a meaningful way that doesn't make you starve, you know, that still allows you to, uh, kind of have the impact you want to have and just yeah. rethinking it a little bit differently. So there you were on YouTube, putting your heart and soul into something to help people find connection with other people. And it just wasn't paying the bills. And you said, yes. okay, I'm out of money. And what, where do I go from here? Yeah. And I'm very thankful to have had like a mentor friend who was like, I think you should kind of uh, take a look at that. Like cash flow solves a lot of problems. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like I'm looking this, for like, <laughs> well, yes. And he's like, you know, like, and I think that got me started to realize that there's sort of two states of mind that we have to be as creators. Uh, or sorry, there's two states of mind that we can fall into as creators. One is that scarcity mindset. One is the, I have enough. Let me kind of think broader than myself. And when I was in that scarcity mindset, I couldn't think past the next video. I couldn't think past, you know, the next month because I was just scared out of my mind that I would have to go get a job again. You know, not that that's a bad thing, but a sign that I failed, like all that stuff. Yeah. And he was right. As soon as I switched everything to 
just like, let me just pour myself into serving people through what they want, right? Which is helping them set up video studios in their home. And like suddenly a lot of these problems sort of started to disappear because, um, man, this goes deep. I don't know how deep you want to go, but, uh, uh there, dude, that's, that's what we're here for. There's this, mind. yeah, I love it. Um, I was talking to my therapist yesterday and he said, there's this thing called emotional reasoning. If okay. you are in a mode where you're tired or you're already discouraged or you are already drained, like as an introvert, for instance, if you just come back from a party or if you're hungry, right? Mm-hmm. Your reasoning starts to go, wait, okay, I'm not feeling too good. Why am I not feeling too good? What else would make me not feel too good? Oh, I would not feel too good if, um, you know, my life choices weren't panning out. Oh, wait, is that what's happening right now? I don't feel too good. Is it because my life kind of sucks? <laughs> and you start thinking along that route and you start assuming that your life choices aren't working out, mm. you know? And um, the other thing is he's like, Hey, Kevin, I think you have ADHD. So I, I'm probably going to lose the train <laughs> of thought here. So bear with me. <laughs> um, and it was just like really eye opening. Like, okay, there's this analogy I've been thinking about a lot recently, which is as entrepreneurs, we're, we're sort of supposed to be like surfers where if we, and I promise this will, I think connect back to what we were talking about. Sure. As surfers, you can move through the water so fast by staying balanced on a surfboard. If you as a surfer fall off that surfboard, no matter how hard you pedal or or paddle, like you're not going to get anywhere. Right. And so as an entrepreneur, I think a lot of people try to hustle and just try to push, but Mm -hmm. that's like us trying to paddle through the water. But if you balance your mental state to kind of trust in what you're doing, trust how you're doing it, trust the people you're serving, and just stay in that mode where you're taking care of yourself. I think you can finally ride the wave. Um, And I think that's kind of what I'm learning is the crux of being that entrepreneur, that creative, that is leaning into the the feeling side, like the caring, like the heart to heart with the people you're serving. Mm -hmm. Because when I try to force what it is that I think I should present myself as on the internet, it's so hard. It's so hard to make videos and you put so much time and energy into it. And every time you have to pick up the camera again, you're like, oh, I don't want to do this. Right. But then when you allow yourself to just be who you are and like me, it's like, I I just, I feel like I'm just like a dork, you know, and showing up in that way and not pretending to be perfect is what I'm learning. Like, this is how you stay balanced on the board, letting yourself just be who you are. And then the content, the, the connections, the relationships of how you can show up for people like real people just kind of comes out naturally, Mm. you know? And so I just keep thinking about that analogy, like stay balanced on the surfboard. What does that mean? You know, man, that sounds like a, that sounds like a very different approach than hustle, grind, put your nose to the grindstone, grind and grind. And pretty soon you have no face left. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I did that for two years and it just sucked. (laughs) <laughs> you know, you think you're going to go live your dream and it's like, oh, this is a living hell. What, what am I doing? So you were at the point where you were loving what you're doing. You believed in what you're doing. It was hard and it wasn't financially sustainable. And so what was it? How, how did you come to the point where you said, OK, this is what I'm going to do next to fix this? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I got to the point where I didn't have another choice. You know, I had to make some money somehow. I was going to be a 30 year old in, I think, I forget how old I was, um, within a couple of years. I'm like, Mm -hmm. I don't want to be, you know, jobless, uh, living at my parents' house, you know, this age, at this age. And I kind of thought, okay, you know, now is a, a time to prioritize who I am as a person and grow over the short term success of this one try, this one at bat. So I said, let's build a practice business. And it's very interesting how jumping into that showed me that a lot of the stuff that I thought I wanted turned out to kind of be very fluid. So for instance, I'll explain that. So I thought I didn't want to work with people. I wanted to just put stuff out on the internet and just go hide in my corner. And then I realized Mm. talking face to face with people um, like this or through like Zoom calls for class and helping people through stuff. And getting that, uh, building up a community of people who are genuinely interested in helping each other out, like that has been one of the most rewarding things compared to just seeing profile pictures with, you know, sentence long comments on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And I think, yeah, it's just, it's been kind of a crazy 
realization now of finally having that course built out, having not just the content, uh, but also having the business operation side, like a team to run that thing, mm. um, to constantly be like understanding how to get our launches to, to perform better. So more people find out that this exists, right? A lot of people are just stuck. Like how in the world do I get my stuff set up better? I don't know anyone to ask. So like all that stuff, um, we're sort of like compartmentalizing where now that stuff is running and I'm there to help out, but now it's back to the content. Like how can I make content that shows up for people so we can bring them into that side of like, let me help you out personally and build mm -hmm. a personal relationship. So I guess as we're talking, I'm kind of like looking for the through thread for all this stuff. And I think it's mm -hmm. kind of that of sort of, I guess, balance. Like keeping that balance on the surfboard again, in this case, it's the meaning versus money. It's like both, right? It's the feeling, but also the, the operations like both, you know? And so, yeah, this is, I think as far as I've come on my own journey, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, I, I feel like there's, there's a lot to be said about adding the other side of that picture that I think most of us have one or the other. Right. We're either like massively creative feely types and mm -hmm. we want to make an impact. Um, and we don't have the other side of how do we build a business out of it to serve real people in a way they actually need help with. Right. Or if we're the introverted type and we're like, mm -hmm. I don't want to talk to people. It's like, well, you might actually enjoy that. Right. Or yeah. what's the other one? Um, or if you're just purely business focused, mm -hmm. getting to, to treat people as real people and connect. I think it's freaking awesome. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So I'm going to pull us back again. You're at the point where YouTube is not working. YouTube is not sustainable. You have no other options. You got to make a change. How did you decide what that change is going to be? Yeah. To be honest, this is a journey that I'm still on. So I'm still trying to make sense of everything. So uh, I'm talking about all this as like a, like just someone who's like bumbling around trying to figure it out. But I think the thought process for me was, A, I find it so valuable to create content that makes people feel less alone in what they're going through. And mm -hmm. specifically for me, it's like, I would have diagnosed one of the world's biggest problems as loneliness. So I wanted to create content that would help people feel less alone. Um, and then, so I was pouring all my time and energy into that, that didn't allow me to sustain my life. And so I realized, the content is going to die unless I do something because I could just burn through my runway and have no more money. And then I'd stop mm -hmm. YouTube altogether. Right. So then I thought, what is another option? Another option is to monetize that directly. I thought like, how do you monetize lonely, like sell them alcohol? Eliminating <laughs> like, loneliness. <laughs> like, what was that? Let me introduce you to my friend, Jack Daniels. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Or, um, or like, it's like you can't monetize friendship. That that becomes like um, platonic uh, prostitution, right? Like, it's, <laughs> it's it's not something I felt like you could directly monetize. So I thought, okay, this is probably more of a longer term goal. I probably have to like learn more about what other fields there are and how to combine something in the future to help solve and contribute to that that solution, right? Um, and I'm really glad I did that because I, I like through that process learned about the mental health field and learned about a lot more of like, you know, the, the online course route. Like there's so mm -hmm. many different ways in which people are tackling that problem. And I think something like loneliness is a multifaceted problem that needs a multifaceted approach. Okay. So coming back to that, I think the third approach mm -hmm. was let's build a business that's related to this YouTube content so that I can build it, spend a year putting together the, the underlying frameworks so that when I come back to making content, I have the engine that takes like, you know, if my, if my YouTube is a flywheel, right? It mm -hmm. takes that energy and turns that into capital so that the energy is not just lost spinning in midair. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I'm at that point now where that's finally become a reality. And I feel very grateful for that. So just to be very on the nose, how did you decide what business you were going to do? Ooh, okay. I was looking at what am I going to create? Is it like some random course about like life purpose? I didn't have my life purpose figured out and like all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And then that mentor of mine was saying, um, he's like, cash flow solves a lot of problems. Do you have anyone asking you for help right now? 
And I'm like, yeah, people keep emailing me asking to pay for my time to teach them how to build their studio or how to make videos. And I keep writing back to them saying like, sorry, I'm not interested in this. I want to do stuff that helps people. And my mentor's like, dude, they're like telling you I need help. Like, what are you doing? That is amazing. And I so want to I help this people. Very, I had this Stop very, emailing me. Yeah. I'm like, I don't want to help you. I'm trying to help people. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I realized I had one very specific view of what helping means, and I could have mm -hmm. broadened it a lot more. So they were, an they, they, they were asking you, how can I make my setup? Not, how, how can I make the look of my video content not look completely horrible? Yeah. Like I'm, like I'm, the, con like I'm the victim in the basement in Stockholm somewhere. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I've, I've come to realize a lot of these people are people who have some very important stuff to share, like experts mm -hmm. who are experts in, for instance, mental health. We've had therapists come work with us. We've had people um, like Tiago Forte, who are like thought leaders who teach people how to manage um, their creativity better. Right. And all this stuff, like a lot of people have they're incredible experts in something. But because of their, their expertise in one area, they don't have expertise in filmmaking, right? 100%. Like you and I, like they haven't done all this editing. And, and so it's like, how do you supercharge these people so they can get their message out to other people? And it's, it's been really cool kind of seeing what people have done with that. You know, and it's not what I expected, but I think it's, it's been super fun so far. What, what would you say is the main effect, the course that you've built and the, you know, and the community that you're building around that helps people upgrade the look and the sound of their shooting spaces. So that's just what we have on the surface. But what does that actually accomplish to people who do that? What, what results do they get? Because it's not just, you know, it's not just, oh, your background is blurry now. But, you know, what is that actually doing and communicating when people get that kind of stuff for themselves? Ooh, yeah, good question. I, the way I see it is like just showing up isn't really enough because there's so much content out there mm -hmm. that, you know, like people just keep throwing stuff. Like, I don't know about you, but I think like for me, I just keep putting stuff on my watch later playlist on YouTube or all these different webinars that I would love to attend, all these courses I would love to attend, but mm -hmm. I just don't have time to do everything. And so it's almost like if you can communicate to people that you have your shit together, right in mm -hmm. your your studio um people will assume pretty accurately that hey you have a message that's also put together you've thought about this and you care enough to put this in a digestible format that i don't have to do a lot of work to consume and download into my head and so it makes people's a it makes people's message a lot more uh relatable like they can they can download it into their head a lot faster so it reaches more people uh, you get more clicks um, on, on average because you have thumbnails worth clicking on, right? You're, you're mm -hmm. clicking on something that looks put together um, and it feels like you're going to enjoy watching it. Uh, secondly, your, for instance, audio doesn't, isn't painful to listen to. Right. And so you're removing barriers to being around you. Uh, it's kind of like if you were to invite someone to sit down with you and you have two options, like one is to sit down with you at a nice toasty coffee shop with really soft music playing and it's a nice quiet atmosphere. The other one is like, let's go sit um, in a dump, <laughs> you know, like let's go sit, you know, in the middle of the night when you got these like ugly lights and super loud, super cold. Uh, even if you're the nicest person in the world, people won't want to spend that much time with you there. Yeah. And so I feel like it's kind of the same thing. Let's sit a space. down in the middle of the hallway in a hospital. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Ugh. Right. It, and a lot of people's YouTube videos and Zoom calls kind of feel like that. Yeah. They feel like they're cramped into a corner. You're kind of looking up their nose and the audio is a little staticky. So it's, it's sort of distracting you half the time. It's way more draining to be around them and trying to process what they're saying. Um, and oftentimes, not to point fingers, but those types of content tend to be the hour long recordings that they just dump somewhere and expect you mm -hmm. to you know, like gravitate toward that content as if there's nothing else to watch on the internet. Right. So yeah, not no mo. Yeah. So it's, it's very, um, I think 
it just hits on the psychological piece of if you want to become a content creator or if you want to reach out and build a human connection through the internet, you kind of have to craft your internet persona, right? You have to show up on the internet in a way that people actually feel the warmth that you have as a person and give you a chance. Um, like to grow as someone on the internet, you by definition have to catch a stranger's attention. You cannot grow by not talking to strangers who don't already know you. So, I mean, I think we can use, I'll use like the biggest edge we can get when it comes to that. Well, I'll tell you, I mean, the, the stuff that you talk about has, I mean, I'm, I'm the direct beneficiary of, of some of the things that you talk about. I mean, even just this space right here, I mean, you won't be able to see it if you're listening to the audio podcast on this, but the, the space that I'm sitting in right now, uh, well, well, number one, we're recording at nighttime, and so the <laughs> so the light spill that tends to completely throw things off uh, out of whack when the sun is blazing through the shades. I haven't uh, I haven't blacked out the windows yet because my wife isn't completely on board with that yet. So I'm just uh, you know we're just riding that balance. We're riding that surfboard, if you will. But um, but as of right now, I mean there 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 are variations in lighting, and there's uh, you know, there are different focal points and there, there are, there, there's, there's way more thought put into what you see other than just my face in the frame right now. And that's as a direct result of conversations with you um, that we've had in, in previous months talking about, okay, how can we make this feel like a place where you have your act together and how it can be something where it's warm and it's inviting and Hey, let's, uh, let's just hang out and let's talk. I mean, and, and it's, and it's the same thing with your space right now. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a very, it's a very inviting, it's a very inviting look. It's good lighting, good sound, well composed background and all that kind of stuff. And when you say it on that level, it, it seems it, it seems to be, oh, well, yeah, so, okay, fine. You have a nice background and blah, blah, blah. That is only scratching the surface of it. I mean, we've already dug into some of the, dug into some of the meaning of what that actually communicates to someone. If I was to add one more thing, I've found that probably by far the biggest impact of having a studio that's pre-designed, right? That you do it once and you get to keep using it. I found that the biggest dividend that pays is actually on the creator themselves because mm. I used to have so many of these mental blocks and I'm still trying to get over many of these, right? But a lot of them around, I'm embarrassed to film in my house because my house doesn't look as put together as everything I see on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Or I have to set up a shot and man, I don't know what shot to set up. And so before I can even start doing the content piece of delivering something important, I have to mess around for four, eight hours sometimes, finding all the gear, getting everything in place, remembering what the settings would be. Oh, going and clearing my memory card and like all that stuff. But then, and so like when you start filming, you're already tired, you're sick of work already. You're like, I don't wanna be here, you mm -hmm. know? And it just really ends up being really toxic for your presence when you're talking to your audience. So now I've gotten to the point where I have the entire, like everything set up and within 60 seconds, I can be on a Zoom call, I can be filming videos and it's crazy. This is like the balance piece of the surfboard. I don't have to go and kind of get myself off balance just to set up and start being able to be present on camera. I can be in my balance spot and just start recording when I'm in that space, you know? So and next that, thing you I know, think, instead of spending an hour, fiddling with lights and checking your focus and seeing how much space is left on your card and all that stuff. Next thing you, you know, you can just hang out and start talking about the psychology of meaning and other things like that. It's, it, it's amazing. Yes. Yes. Uh, and that's probably the thing that I'm most thankful for. And it like, it pays dividends for the rest of your digital life. Like, actually, even if you upgrade your gear and all that stuff, you have this understanding of, okay, I need this thing or, okay, I'm going to put this here. And when you design it around your workflow too, especially, it just, I found that I've been able to create so much more content now that I took the time to build this content machine thing. Mm -hmm. 
you know, and I, that's what I've seen in all these successful creators is they take the time to build out the process, build out the system instead of just grinding away at the, 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 the deliverable right in front of them. Yeah. So you are opening up a new cohort for your course right now. Tell us about that. Yeah, this is uh, the, the most fun way that we can engage together with people who want to build out their space. So I used to do this just digitally, but I realized what people needed the most was someone to say like, okay, can I just send you photos of my space? Where do you think I should put my desk? Or what lens should I use? I've got six and a half feet, specifically six and a half feet to place my camera here. What do I do in my situation? I've watched 20 of these YouTube tutorials and they don't have the same gear as me. They don't have the same content goals as me. They don't have the same needs for my space aside from filming that I have, right? And so mm -hmm. I've noticed that it's just so much fun and so important um, for, for past students, like getting to workshop it, not just with me, but with the community of other people in the same boat. And yeah, so it's, it's kind of an excuse to be able to nerd out more with folks in person, for me personally. Um, and get to guide um, students through that process together. So within a couple of weeks, you're gonna go from having, um, you can, this is for all skill levels. You can have no idea how to film stuff, no idea what camera to buy, not have any gear, um, and not even know where in your house you should even set up a studio. You just know that, hey, I believe this is important. Yeah. Within six weeks, let's have something that I'm proud of, that I can use for you know ages and ages to come. Mm -hmm. So. That's yeah. Come, come join us. If any of you are interested, it would be an honor to have you. Um, we're always on the we're lookout for, for good people. Um, and so everyone in your community, I feel like everyone who's, who cares about the stuff that you're all about, I think is a cool person in my book. Awesome. So if they're, <laughs> if, if, if people are looking to find out more, maybe even join this cohort, I mean, cause it is for a limited time, which is, which is why I I'm literally why I, texted you earlier today and said, you know what? I'm looking at my calendar. I, you know, and I'm looking at your launch schedule. I want to make sure this episode drops at this time so people can find out and get in on this cohort. If that's something that's a fit for them. We have a special link in the show notes of this episode, storygreenlight.com slash dream studio. And it will take you directly to Kevin's course. And, um, if by chance, the uh, if by chance the course is not available for that specific cohort, is, is there going to be a wait list or is that what, what happens if that window is closed? Yeah, this is something we want to keep doing. Um, and so there's going to be a wait list on the website or if anyone's listening to this and, you know, in the future, we're going to have more of these cohorts happening. And so, yeah, you all are more than welcome to come hang out with us, uh, check, check up on us and see if we have a cohort open. And if so, you're more than welcome to come join us. It is always a blast hanging out with Kevin. And not only is he just a great guy, I've also really benefited from his expertise in my own shooting space. Uh, you definitely need to check out some of the before and after pictures from some of his students. They are phenomenal. And you can see those by going to storygreenlight.com slash dream studio. And if you hear this in time to join the latest cohort for his course, definitely jump on that right now. You will be glad you did. Kevin was actually a guest speaker in The Green Room, our membership site that's all about helping you level up your content, level up yourself, and get things done in a community of creators like you. So if you'd like to see Kevin's presentation to The Green Room, including some specific suggestions on how he helped me level up my own shooting space, you can get full access to The Green Room for a month for free. You can get started right now at the link in the description below. I'll see you there.